Live from Tampa Bay Streaming News Leader, this is ABC Action News, taking action for you. Right now at 5, bracing for the cold. As Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips tracks the Christmas cold snap, we're making sure you're ready. And another insurance head in Florida steps down. Tonight, a closer look at the changes coming just a week after the state passes major insurance reform. And the community pulling together to save an infant when everything was working against them. How they helped land an emergency rescue plane. But we start with those freezing temperatures slowly making their way to the Bay Area. Good evening and welcome to ABC Action News at 5. I'm Jameson Euler. And I'm Wendy Ryan. Thank you for joining us. First tonight, let's get right over to Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips with your forecast. And Dennis, of course, we keep hearing terms like hard freeze and freeze warning. We live in Florida. We know hurricanes, but what exactly do those terms mean? It's a good question, Wendy. A hard freeze means temperatures of 28 degrees or lower for an extended period of time, usually about four hours. So when you see these purple counties right here, Citrus, Hernando, and Pasco, most of Pasco, that would be temperatures expected to be at 28 or below for at least four hours on Saturday morning. This is for Saturday. By the way, it's also going to be for Sunday as well. It's going to be for Christmas as well. The blue colors are freeze warnings. That mean, or watches rather, it'll be a warning tomorrow. A watch just like a hurricane means a couple of days out, probably going to happen. A warning means it's likely going to happen within 24 hours. So freeze watches for the dark blue color, meaning temperatures of 28 to 32 for several hours. Now, I want to stress something. If you live in areas that are not in the colors, Pinellas, Coastal Manatee, and Sarasota, DeSoto, you might think, well, okay, we're not going to freeze. It's just not the case. There will be freezing temperatures in those counties. It just won't be widespread enough for the Weather Service to issue a warning or a watch for that entire county. So if you live in Pinellas, if you live in areas that you might normally cover your plants, you probably want to do it because it is going to be about as cold Probably this will be the coldest snap of the entire season. I mean, obviously the winter's just begun. It started yesterday, but regardless, we don't typically see weather very often as cold as it's going to be this weekend. It's been over 30 years over the Christmas holiday. So you look at rain now moving into the area. This is actually a stalled out front that's just sitting around on top of us. Pretty healthy cluster of storms offshore. We'll keep our eyes on that over the next few hours, but at least for right now, the rush hour, kind of rainy across much of the area. There are the heavier storms. Lightning strikes nearly 500 in the last 15 minutes. So again, that needs to be monitored over the next few hours. Otherwise, we were warm today. We'll be warm tonight. Tomorrow morning, even starting your day will be okay, not all that cold. But once this front comes through, temperatures crash. We drop all the way down into the 20s and 30s on Saturday morning, Christmas Eve, and on Christmas Day as well. And wind chills will be in the teens. So again, tomorrow morning, waking up into the 60s, temperatures fall all afternoon long. And there are your wake-up temperatures in the 20s and 30s. More on that coming up in a couple of minutes. All right, thanks, Dennis. We'll check back with you. Well, before the really cold weather arrives, you want to make sure that you're prepared for the big chill. After all, we live in the Sunshine State. Yeah, we're not used to this. ABC Action News reporter Eric Waxler has more on how you can handle the dip in temperatures. At the Mud Meetup in Odessa, it doesn't take much for these dogs to get excited. And some of them actually will enjoy the really cold weather coming our way. The Huskies, the Shepherds, we have some St. Bernards, the Mountain Dogs, all of them. When it gets cold like this, they just go nuts and they absolutely love it. So this is kind of what they were bred for. But others don't deal with the cold very well and need to be kept inside. For those without their own thick natural coat, a doggy sweater can help. It definitely helps them. Um, and then even some breeds that are longer hair that people shave them, um, they still, because now they're missing their hair, they do need some kind of coverage. Once you have your precious pets squared away, there are other living things that can take a beating from freezing temps. Your landscaping. Dave Baker owns Florescape and says hardy plants should handle the cold just fine and will recover from any damage. It's the light, flowery, delicate plants that you should be more concerned about. Those are the ones ones that we want to make sure that we cover them up. You're going to cover them up with a bed sheet, a pillowcase. You don't want to use plastic. That's not enough warmth. So we're trying to keep the warmth in. He says to pull the sheets off once temperatures start going back up above 32 degrees so the soil can warm back up. It's not like up north where that freeze is going to hold for 12 hours. We're like maybe an hour or two, so we're not that concerned about a hard freeze. Baker says it won't be cold enough for lawns to be affected. In Odessa, Eric Waxler, ABC Action News.
And with the cold snap, it's important to remember our pipes aren't necessarily designed for freezing temperatures. Tampa's Water Department is putting extra crews on standby to respond to any water main breaks. But most importantly, know where your home's water shutoff is so you can quickly turn it off if something goes wrong. This winter cold front is massive, covering so much of the country. Look at this driving video from Des Moines, Iowa, with snow blanketing the interstate there. And on the right side, you can see blizzard conditions in Douglas County, Kansas. The National Weather Service temperatures have dropped below zero with wind gusts of 35 miles per hour. And if we take a look at the flight board at Tampa International Airport, you can see there a lot of delays. It doesn't matter where you're flying to, the northeast, the southwest part of the country, or the Midwest. That's right. And so the one thing you need to know if you're flying anywhere, be ready for anything to happen. And of course, bring some extra patience with you. And ABC Action News reporter Rebecca Petit joins us live from Tampa International Airport as people start arriving out there. Rebecca? It's still very busy here at TPA. Now, about 75 to 80,000 people are expected to travel here today alone. Now, the good news is there hasn't been many flight delays. Today is the busiest travel day before Christmas here at Tampa International Airport. And one after another, families are reuniting with loved ones. I'm very surprised. <laughs> now I feel like I'm turning red. After not seeing each other for 10 months, Scott Clendenning made sure his daughter saw a familiar face when she touched down from D.C. She's such a huge part of our family. This makes our Christmas. Winter storms are creating massive delays and cancellations across the country. So Kevin Whalen wanted to spread some Christmas cheer on his flight in from Virginia. Make people happy, make people smile, love this holiday season, always love Christmas. TPA tells me there has only been a handful of canceled flights here. They advise to check with your airline ahead of time. Hopefully, it won't, ours won't get canceled and we have a nonstop flight. Many airlines are waiving change fees and offering travelers the option of choosing new flights to avoid the bad weather. It was just a minor delay, fortunately, this time just because of weather, but only about an hour and a half late, which is good. But overall, holiday travels went better than I expected. <laughs> And as Santa's sister serenade travelers, the urge to be home for Christmas appears to outweigh cancellation concerns. Family is everything for the holidays, so this is where I would always want to spend it. Airport officials encourage you to show up early and not checking a bag could make your trip less stressful. Live in TPA, Rebecca Petit, ABC Action News. All right, Rebecca, thank you. And now we want to take a live look at the roads where many people are traveling by car. It's already bumper to bumper. You see there on the left. AAA expects more than 100 million people to drive to visit loved ones or go on vacation this weekend. This is a live look at the traffic on I-275 at Del Mabry in Tampa. And again, on the left especially, it's a park parking lot slow going. Yeah, we have a sad update tonight about that grandmother and child who were rescued after being trapped under a car in Tampa. The 80-year-old woman has passed away from her injuries. That woman and her three-year-old great-granddaughter were pinned under the car when the driver was backing out of a parking space. He told police he didn't see them. This happened at the Arbor Ponds apartment complex on December 18th. Tampa police say the investigation into the accident is ongoing and there are civil violations pending for the driver. The good news here. The three-year-old who was injured in that accident continues to improve and is expected to survive. Another one of Florida's top insurance officials is out. Citizens Property Insurance CEO Barry Gilway is retiring, having served as the state-backed carrier's chief for more than 10 years. His announcement follows the departure of several other high-ranking regulators, including Florida's insurance commissioner. Capitol reporter Forrest Saunders tells us some worry a vacuum is now forming as the state's insurance market continues to teeter. It was in this Thursday board meeting. I've been in the business for 52 years. That CEO Barry Gilway said he was out, retiring after nearly 11 years running the state-backed property insurance carrier, Citizens. Obviously, stepping down. The 77-year-old's departure is expected sometime before next March. He said he had faith in the, quote, huge success of this month's property insurance reforms and his, quote, dream team of employees carrying on without him. I think Citizens is just in excellent shape. Uh, to move forward. 
Gilway's retirement comes just as Citizens undergoes an overhaul to shed many of its 1.1 million policyholders. Lawmakers want to return the company to a carrier of last resort, reducing taxpayer liability during the next major storm. Specifically, citizens will require things like flood insurance and that customers move to a private plan if they can find one up to 20% higher than their current premium. For most people, they want to grow their business. Uh, we're going to have to hire somebody and we're going to ask them to shrink their business. Former State Senator Jeff Brandis, who's been watching property insurance for years, says it'll be a challenging environment to find a replacement and that the job lacks perks. It's a very difficult job that doesn't offer stock options or anything else like that that we would typically incentivize a CEO to come in for. So uh, you, you, what you have is a behemoth of an organization that is going through an incredible amount of turmoil. Gilway's pose isn't the only position that needs filling. Last week, Florida's insurance commissioner, David Altmeyer said he was leaving on December 28th. Plus, Deputy Commissioner Suzanne Murphy also departing earlier this month. So we, we uh, welcome any talented folks. The governor addressed the growing vacancies last week, suggesting some were due to the new six-year lobbying ban for agency heads and other chief regulators starting in January. This kind of end of the year is kind of a deadline for people in some of these positions because there's different things that are changing with the law and what you can do in the future. So we knew that would potentially be a pressure point. A pressure point that's putting pressure on Florida's still teetering property insurance market now trying to regain its footing. At the Capitol, Forrest Saunders, ABC Action News. And some good news as we end the year. A new report from the Commerce Department says the U.S. economy grew faster than expected in the third quarter. The report found the U.S. gross domestic product grew at an annual pace of 3.2 percent between July and September. That's higher than the 2.9 percent estimate from a month ago. It's a sign the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes meant to cool the economy and fight inflation are having only limited impacts. And that fear sent stocks tumbling today. The Dow at one point down more than 700 points as investors worried about those rising interest rates not really slowing the economy. Citrus County Animal Services suspended all non-emergency dog intakes and all dog adoptions until further notice. A highly contagious virus is going around at the shelter in Inverness. Cat adoptions and intakes are not affected here. This is the fourth Bay Area shelter taking these measures due to the virus. Pinellas County Animal Services says it won't resume dog intakes and adoptions until January. To read more about how this virus impacts dogs, you can visit our website at abcactionnews.com. So to come, the miraculous rescue that saved an infant's life, the community that came together when anything that could go wrong went wrong. And Christmas just got a little merrier for kids at a local hospital. We're visiting today's pop-up Christmas shop. You're watching ABC Action News, also available 24-7 and free on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, and Apple TV with ABC Action News Plus. Sponsored by Robert Palmer and RP Funding. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Hurry in to get our best deals of the season. Get in and get away. Lease a Tucson for $279 a month or get $1250 bonus cash plus zero payments for 90 days. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. You want to know how to successfully prosecute a medical malpractice case? Hard work, not gimmicks. Call Manny and Gordon or visit us at fightnegligence.com. Tower Radiology is now TGH Imaging, powered by Tower. Same great patient care, still the market leader, now with a new name. Setting the standard in radiology together. TGH Imaging, powered by Tower. At Chevy, the holidays mean going places and doing things you love to do with friends and family. Visit your local Chevy dealer, and when you find your red tag, you find your deal. Then make the most of your time with the people who matter most. Find new moments, find new roads. Find your red tag and get 2500 total cash allowance on all 2022 Silverado pickups with a 2.7 liter turbo engine. See your southern Chevy dealers. Being injured in an accident is only the beginning of your problems. Don't throw away your one shot at compensation. Make it count. Fair and fair. You sick of feeling like you're working for your health insurance company? I sure was. Looking at a bunch of forms to avoid stupid charges, I get burned enough around here. It's better with Oscar Insurance. 
I can just go to the doctor and be done. Most of my meds only cost three bucks, and bills don't come at me out of nowhere. Now I don't got to put up with any BS. Larry! I caught up talking about my insurance. Oscar, health insurance that actually works for you. When you or a loved one have been injured, an experienced attorney can make a huge difference. Call 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Welcome back now to an incredible story of a community coming together to save a baby. This all happened in a remote town in Alaska. An infant desperately needed to get on a plane seeking medical care, but the runway lights at the local airport were broken. A quick thinking airport worker and other locals came up with a plan to act fast. The small community of just 150 people gathered nearly 30 ATVs, cars and snowmobiles, positioning each one where a runway light would be. Look at this. That light actually allowed the rescue plane to touch down and pick up that little one. Almost everybody sat there on their vehicles and paused just watching the plane leave. Extremely grateful. That's incredible, right? The baby was airlifted to another clinic for care and actually is now back home recovering, all thanks to these holiday heroes. Well, it's been more than 12 weeks since Hurricane Ian slammed into southwest Florida. And this morning, both Sarasota and Manatee counties are reporting they're nearing the end of picking up storm debris. So far, Sarasota County picked up 3.3 million cubic yards of debris, while Manatee County collected 725,000 cubic yards. Because collections are almost complete, if you have any leftover storm debris, you're asked to put it in your regular trash for pickup. Christmas just got a bit merrier for families with children in the hospital. St. Joseph's Children's Hospital put together a pop-up shop for parents to grab gifts for their families free of charge. ABC Action News reporter Lydia Vasquez shares what some families are going through and why these gifts mean so much to them. The holidays can be hard on anyone, it's but spending the holidays in the hospital is a challenge these families never signed up for. It's hard. It's hard for the second year in a row, my older two dance, and we ended up here on their big Nutcracker production weekend. Christina Shea's four-year-old daughter has special needs, and much like last Christmas, her family is spending a lot of time at St. Joseph Children's Hospital. It's challenging. You want it to, you hope for it to be such a happy time, and instead you're worried about one kiddo while trying to be present and happy for the others, and it's just... A juggling act. It's why every year, child life specialists at St. Joseph Children's Hospital, along with volunteers, put together Santa's secret shop. Families can pick out 10 gifts for their patient and their siblings. Can I get one for each? Of course. It's really hard time of year for a lot of families who have kids who are sick and uh, hospitalized. They don't have a lot of time to go shopping. It's so much. It's hard to be in the hospital at the holidays, so for us to be able to alleviate some of that stress for them, it's invaluable. And while walking through hospital hallways can be a memory some people wish to forget, Aubriana wouldn't miss the chance to volunteer, as she knows what a simple wrapped gift truly means. I used to be in the hospital, and I got a lot of gifts from people, and it made me really happy to think that other people are thinking of me. And there's so many people donating today. And there's so many toys because of all those people that are thinking of the kids in the hospital. From stuffed animals to AirPods, the gifts of giving is helping these parents get through some of the hardest moments of their lives. It was uplifting and heartwarming. And I can't express enough how much I appreciate that we're thought of as a family and not just a patient. In Tampa, I'm Lydia Vasquez, ABC Action News. All right, right now we're waiting for that cold weather to come, but in other parts of the country, it's already here, Dennis. Yeah, Chicago right now, two degrees, and there's three-hour delays for flights out of Chicago. So for us, overnight, we'll see some rain. Tomorrow morning, not all that cold early in the morning, but temperatures will fall the entire day. So that 69 degrees and windy weather, 
Well, the 69 degrees will be in the overnight, and temperatures will continue to fall right on through the weekend. So as I mentioned right now in Chicago, well, the high temperature tomorrow in Chicago is 2 degrees. That's the high, and these are current delays of 159 minutes on average. East Coast storm, definitely wind and rain, but no snow. So that's good for the East Coast. Now you go west toward Pittsburgh, Syracuse, Buffalo, anywhere inland, that's when it turns to snow and ice. And speaking of ice, we will see some ice of our own on Saturday morning, Christmas Eve, and Christmas morning as well. The blue color freeze watch means a freeze is expected on Saturday, and by the way, Sunday as well. And then the purple color is a hard freeze watch. Uh, that means temperatures expected to be below 28 for at least four hours. And that would be Citrus Hernando and most of Pasco right along the coast. It's more of just a freeze watch. And I'll say this again because I know a lot of folks are going to look if you live in Pinellas and you're, they're not part of the watch. You're like, oh, well, we're okay. There will be freezing temperatures in Pinellas. Uh, there will be. Doesn't necessarily mean that the entire county is going to see a freeze, which is why there is no warning. We're not looking for widespread freezing conditions in Pinellas, especially along the coast where it will probably stay mid-30s. But there are plenty of inland areas away from the bay and away from the water where it will drop down to 32 degrees. Here's a live look at Titan Doppler radar. There's that rain I talked about. And, and I'll tell you, this area right here, the lightning is getting a little bit closer. So there will be some thunderstorms over the next hour or two moving into Pinellas and Manatee and also southwestern Hillsborough County. At this point, nothing severe. I'm not really seeing much going on with it, but we will keep our eyes on it just in case. And again, at the very least, a rainy evening for most of Pinellas, Hillsborough, and areas to the south. The farther north, not so much. Tomorrow morning, that all begins to change. Temperatures right now, 60s and 70s. We're in the upper 70s today across our southern counties, but now cloudy skies and some showers at the airport in Tampa. 66 degrees with southeast winds at 7 miles an hour. Frontal boundary is just kind of lingering across central Florida. It's kind of draped across the state, which is why the rain is just kind of moving along with it. It isn't really moving much to the south. But the stronger front, the one that's going to bring us all our cold air, that one comes in tomorrow morning. There it is. 7, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, some isolated showers. And as that comes through, the winds are going to shift to the northwest. They'll start picking up. They'll be howling. And you will see temperatures drop with wind chills Saturday morning in the teens. I pretty much think the entire Bay Area will be under a wind chill advisory on Friday night and into Saturday morning. There's a look. Sunny skies across most of the area. Christmas morning, same thing. With afternoon highs struggling to get out of the 40s. Maybe around 50 degrees if we're lucky. Next week, big warm up though by the end of the week. Go figure. So tomorrow morning, we start the day in the mid 60s. We end the day in the upper 20s to lower 30s. That's Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, we're not going to get much higher than the mid to upper 40s. And Christmas morning, again, lows in the upper 20s to low 30s. Notice St. Pete 36. So that's why you're not seeing that freeze watch or likely a warning for most of Pinellas, just because of the warmer temperatures near the water. But it will be plenty cold enough to see freezing conditions. Not frost, though, because the winds will still be a little bit too strong. Forecast highs for the weekend, 40s. And then look at next week right back up to 80 degrees. Go figure. Florida's most accurate is seven day. Tomorrow morning, a few showers. Then it all changes. Temperatures drop all day long. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, sunny, very cold, about as cold as we ever see here in the Bay Area. Highs in the 40s, lows in the 20s and 30s. I'm Wendy Lane, and coming up, I'll show you how a celebrity chef that was once on Hell's Kitchen is now making a huge difference at a Pinellas County school that he once attended. We're talking USF Bulls on the next morning blend. In fact, the new football head coach, Coach Alex Golish, will be here in studio. We're going to get to know him, plus more fun. Hope to see you at 10 a.m. ABC Action News is sponsored by 1-800-ASK-GARY.
Hey you, 1-800-ASK-GARY. So why is it that some people don't get enough money from their insurance company to cover their injury? It's called lowballing, and that's why you need a lawyer so that it doesn't happen to you. And we can help you find the right one. Call 1-800-ASK-GARY. I'm Robert Palmer, founder of RP Funding, and home values are at an all-time high, making it a great time to turn your home equity into the cash you need. Call 855-RP-FUNDING. That's 855-773-8634. It's NBA Christmas Day. Five star studded matchups all day long, beginning at noon on ESPN and ABC. In March of 2016, I was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Moffitt Cancer Center has over 40 world-renowned physicians who specialize exclusively in all blood cancers and offers the most advanced treatments, including immunotherapy, blood and marrow transplant, and over 600 clinical trials to provide the best outcomes in Florida. Moffitt is doing work that is improving patients' outcomes. Call Moffitt to connect with a blood cancer expert in one day. Did you know that if left untreated, vein disease can lead to ulcers or even blood clots in your legs? Be proactive. See a vein doctor at United Vein Centers. Call 1 800 New Legs. Hey, 1 800 Ask Gary. Yes, so, so I'm wondering why would I need a lawyer after my car crash? Well, the insurance companies have lawyers working on their side. You might want one on yours, and we'll help you find one. Call 1 800 Ask Gary. We're back right now with a live look at the first ever Hanukkah celebration on Water Street in Tampa. And if you're looking to celebrate the Festival of Lights, there's a special Grand Menorah lighting happening in about a half hour. There's also live entertainment, food and activities, and it's all to mark the fifth night of Hanukkah. The event runs until 8 o'clock this evening, and the lighting starts at 6. Also happening tonight, St. Petersburg is hosting its annual Hanukkah parade. Cars with menorahs mounted on top will start at the Shabbat Jewish Center. The parade will travel to St. Pete Beach. Uh, at the Tradewinds Hotel, it's going to end with the lighting of a giant menorah. The event free and open to all ages. The parade begins at 6 p.m. Bring your umbrella. I was yeah. going to say, you know, you got to be prepared this weekend like we normally aren't with yeah. the rain gear and right. the cold weather it's stuff. Definitely a little sweater, yeah. little Everything. boots, anything you need, right? i got to go find my jacket. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Somewhere back or my gloves. I used to have them at one time. Yeah. I don't know where yeah, they exactly. are. And some stars. Paul LeGrone yeah. joins us with what's coming up at 530. So we're catching up with a TV celebrity chef tonight coming back home to deliver some Christmas surprises. We'll take you there next. And a lot of businesses are keeping a very close eye on that incoming cold. And we're going to show you how plant nurseries are preparing for the dramatic drop in temperatures. And we're also taking a closer look at the massive budget that still has not yet passed in Congress. The big winners and the losers in the proposed bill. Closed captioning is sponsored by Lickland Chrysler Dodge Jeep on I-4 exit 31. story comes full circle. It means you're exhausting every resource, investigating every angle, asking the tough questions that lead to answers. Would this not further divide the country? We debate, we discuss, we challenge viewpoints. It's bringing clarity to the issues affecting you. This is our city. This is our state. This is Full Circle Florida. Take us to court. Seriously. Bad bed makes for bad back. 
during Mattress Firm's Dream Sember Sale. Get a king for the price of a queen and save up to $700 on top brands. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying Sealy purchase only at Mattress Firm. Heavy duty pulling power. To conquer the high road or the off road. The GMC Sierra Heavy Duty. Premium and capable. It's the holidays. You'll find the year's best selection of GMC Sierra Heavy Duty pickups in stock and ready for delivery. See your local GMC dealer today. At Checkers, we're celebrating fry season greetings with the Fry Lovers Burger. Get the classic hand-seasoned patty with American cheese and piled with our oh-so-famous seasoned fries. And now, the Fry Lovers Burger is part of the two for four dollar mix and match menu for a limited time. Want even more? Taste Checkers Fry Season Holiday Hero, the super loaded Buford. All the bacon, fries, and whoa, a double burger can hold. Don't miss out. Just like the holidays, these will be gone before you know. It. Fry season greetings from Checkers. Short or long, every tale tells a story, and Pet Supermarket gets that. Who's my good girl? Is this for you? Try catching this one. Who's hungry? That one? I totally agree. <gasps> Who's at the door? Is it for you? Pet Supermarket. Everything you need to make your pet's tail a happy tail. Visit the Pet Supermarket Holiday Shop online for the hottest pet tech, cozy beds, and more. Research has shown that people who hire attorneys to handle their injury cases, on average, get more money. Junk sleep got you all jumbled up. During Mattress Firm's Dream Sember Sale, save up to 60% with Sealy Queen mattresses starting at $279.99 and Sleepy starting at $169.99. Only at Mattress Firm. Tonight, get ready for the cold. Dennis is here tracking the big winter blast that includes a hard freeze for parts of the Bay Area. Plus, making sure everyone feels the love during the holidays. That knock on the door every day is a reminder that they're cared for and they're loved. And just uh, to make sure they're all right. Tonight, we're going along door to door and a special homecoming in Pinellas Park. A TV celebrity chef goes back to his roots to steer up some holiday cheer. ABC Action News at 5.30 starts now. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Paula Grohl. Well, three days before Christmas and the stock market today taking a dive as we get right to the right now headlines at this hour. The Dow ending the day almost down 350 points. At one point, it was down more than 700. Today's good report on the economy actually fueled investor concerns about the impact that those rising interest rates are having to stop inflation. The founder of FTX now back inside the United States, Sam Bankman fried expected in court today to face fraud charges. He has acknowledged risk management failures at FTX, that crypto exchange company, but he says he does not believe he did anything criminal. Well, as we get closer to Christmas, a live look here at the roads tonight in Tampa. A lot of folks traveling already. Here's a live look at I-275 near the Howard Franklin Bridge on the Tampa side, and you can see it is stacked and backed on both sides. And we know a lot of you are flying out for the holiday, or maybe you're picking someone up at the airport. Here's a live look from TPA, a busy terminal for sure. If you're picking someone up or traveling yourself, be sure to check with your airline because that big cold front is causing a lot of delays and cancellations, the domino effect unfolding across the country. And with that, we set the table here for the man in charge, Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips. Dennis, I remember Christmas 1989 here in Tampa. I was helping my father fix a water heater that froze up in the middle of the night, and I couldn't feel my fingers. <laughs> yeah, I was working in Gainesville. It was my first year in Florida, and we had two inches of snow on Christmas Eve night and Christmas morning, and I don't remember forecasting two inches of snow. I'll tell you that. I woke up that morning. I couldn't believe it. And there were flurries in the Bay Area as well, in addition to the cold. Well, right now, we showed you the video or the live shot outside of the Howard Franklin. One of the main reasons the traffic is a slow go, but it's raining. 
and there's actually some moderate rain falling across the area right now. You can see it right there over the bridges, so that makes it even tougher. Now, there are a couple of thunderstorms about 40 now, 40 to 50 miles offshore, and I think by the time they actually make it here, it'll be more southern Pinellas or northern Manatee County, maybe into the bay and eventually southwestern Hillsborough County. Nothing severe right now, but still, there's what I'm talking about. The rush hour is tricky enough. You throw in some downpours, it makes it even rougher, and there are those storms. Lightning strikes have come down a lot, though. They were close to 500 earlier. Now they're only down to just shy of 100 in the last 15 minutes. 60s and 70s today, but the cold air is on the way. It isn't this one. It's the next front, and that arrives first thing in the morning. More on that coming up in a couple of minutes. One, two punch, Dennis. Thank you. Well, a lot of us are not used to this cold weather, and some businesses are showing our Jada Williams today what they're doing to get ready. At the Little Red Wagon Native Nurseries, there's no shortage of plants. So you would think that right now the nursery is busy rounding them all up in an effort to protect them from the upcoming cold. For native plants, it's actually pretty easy. They evolved here, so they're used to Florida, whatever Florida pr presents, hurricanes, winter, sun, hot, heat, you know, all the things. So you don't really have to do a whole lot. Listening to Mother Nature is the first step for CEO Anita Camacho. One of the things that you notice before a cold front like this comes through is we do get a good rain a lot of times and it saturates the ground, which is what prepares the plants. So we're really kind of mimicking what Mother Nature would typically do in most cases for, you know, for pre preparing for these kind of cold snaps. But preparations aren't so simple for Keel and Curly Winery. The winery's strawberries are the most vulnerable. Once the fills like temperatures drop down to 32 degrees, the winery will turn on its sprinklers to keep the berries and blooms warm. Once it eventually freezes, that should lock in the temperature at 32. That'll take a lot of work, 100 gallons of water per minute per acre, in fact. They're dealing with about 600 pounds of strawberries throughout the two acres. A lot of work, all to keep their crops warm throughout the weekend. In Hillsborough County, Jada Williams, ABC Action News. All right, next here to our ongoing coverage of the price of paradise here tonight. And I want to show you something as we uh, continue to struggle to afford the rising cost of living. As I walk you through what we learned today, according to a group called Adam, home prices in Hillsborough County rose by 18% in the fourth quarter of this year. And the Bay Area, it turns out right now, is the second least affordable large market in the entire United States. Now nationwide, home ownership is now taking up about 32 percent of the average wage. And we're now the highest unaffordable point right now in 2000, since 2007, which was right before the country's housing market, as you know, crashed. Well, as we move on next here tonight, uh, we know that the holidays are a time that a lot of folks come together, but for many seniors in our community, that's just not their reality. ABC Action News reporter Rochelle Aline showing us how one local organization is working year-round to fix this issue and how we can all pitch in to help. For the folks at Meals on Wheels Tampa, the holidays don't stop deliveries. We provide meals for them 365 days a year uh, with the goal of keeping them independent and living in their own home. More than 1,100 meals prepared fresh in their kitchen are taken out to those in the community who are homebound or struggle to cook. But after one quick ride with Executive Director Stephen King, Meals on Wheels. It becomes clear that their mission is about so much more than food. For the people we serve, so many of them are isolated with no family around. They're on their own. And that, that knock on the door every day is a reminder that they're cared for and they're loved and just uh, to make sure they're all right. King says most of their recipients are seniors whose only real in-person contact this holiday season will come from his volunteers. I'm the executive director of the WellMed Charitable Foundation. Mental health expert Carol Zerniel says that level of isolation can lead to loneliness and mental decline for folks. To help fight this, this holiday season, she's encouraging the community to come together and be more intentional about checking in on our seniors who may be struggling. And she says the best the best way to start is simply by striking up a conversation. On the phone, 
in person, that opportunity to engage and connect with another person. That small act, you would be surprised how powerful that is in anyone's life. In Tampa. Merry Christmas to you. Rochelle Uleen. God bless. ABC Action News. In Tampa Bay to Washington, D.C., and a live look at the Capitol there tonight where lawmakers are still debating in Congress trying to pass a new federal spending bill. That $1.7 trillion bill hit a big slowdown last night after a Republican lawmaker introduced an amendment that was meant to slow immigration on Wednesday night, and that created sort of a back and forth. Well, meanwhile, the deal was eventually released, and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says that the House could vote on the bill as early as tonight. The bill is hundreds of pages long, and our own Joe St. George is showing us the biggest winners and the potential losers in this new trillion-dollar budget. Congress is putting the final touches today on a massive $1.7 trillion budget. Why does it matter? Well, it funds the government through September. It provides $45 billion for Ukraine, which President Zelensky expressed appreciation for Wednesday in Washington. It attempts to prevent another January 6th attack by clarifying the role Congress plays when it comes to certifying the Electoral College. The legislation even bans federal employees from using TikTok on government-owned devices, all while providing $40 billion dollars to support recovery efforts from natural disasters like Hurricane Ian. But this budget doesn't go as far as some on Capitol Hill would like. Many policy ideas have been left out and it may be years before they get debated again. Budget watchers say the first biggest loser is the marijuana industry. Those working or using cannabis in states where it's legal were hoping that a House and a Senate controlled by Democrats would enact more reforms. The budget being passed does no such thing. In fact, even marijuana banking reforms that would have allowed dispensaries better access to banking systems didn't make it into the final bill. Biggest loser number two, immigration advocates. <laughs> We have been following for months the push to pass some sort of immigration reform that would provide legal protection to DACA recipients. Marches on Capitol Hill a few weeks ago were taking place as lawmakers met behind the scenes to try and strike a deal. That never materialized. As a result, those immigrants who came to the U.S. illegally as children will remain in a state of limbo as legal challenges to their immigration status continue. Biggest loser number three, refugees from Afghanistan. It has been nearly a year and a half since the withdrawal from that country when thousands of Afghan refugees were resettled here. The Afghan Adjustment Act would have granted a path to legal permanent residency, but it failed to be included in this budget. Without action soon, many Afghans face the risk of deportation. Deportation. And biggest loser number four, the expanded child tax credit. There was a push to bring back the 2021 benefit, which deposited monthly checks into qualifying parents' bank accounts. Ultimately, though, the program was deemed too controversial to be included in this must-pass budget. All of these programs now will still be debated in the new Congress come January, but with Republicans taking over the House and Democrats controlling the Senate, more gridlock is expected. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Still to come next at 5.30, a leak on the International Space Station. What NASA says actually happened, causing coolant to spill out. And the TV celebrity chef cooking up some holiday cheer in Pinellas County. His big homecoming. We'll take you there next. Protecting the state we call home from natural disasters. We need to do it for the future. I don't think we have a choice. We have to do it. In a full circle report, the race to build a stronger Florida and the cost to make it happen, tonight at 6. I'm Robert Palmer, founder of RP Funding, and home values are at an all-time high, making it a great time to turn your home equity into the cash you need. Call 855-RP-FUNDING. That's 855-773-8634. The Florida Lottery is proud to contribute billions of dollars to education in our state. So Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. At Chevy, the holidays mean going places. And doing things you love to do with friends and family. Visit your local Chevy dealer, and when you find your red tag, you find your deal. Then make the most of your time with the people who matter most. Find new moments, find new roads. Find your red tag and get 2500 total cash allowance on all 2022 Silverado pickups with a 2.7 liter turbo engine. See your southern Chevy dealers. 
Welcome back. Well, look at this and pay attention to the bottom part of your screen there. NASA scientists investigating that coolant leak that you see there on board the International Space Station. This happened last week as two Russian cosmonauts were getting ready to exit that space station for a spacewalk. Russian space officials say that leak may have been caused by a micro meteorite. Well, we move on next here tonight to another act of giving this holiday season. The Hillsborough County Public Schools security team spent their morning today delivering gifts to several schools. This is them here delivering toys at Lockhart Elementary, just one of the 15 schools involved. That's 10 more from last year, by the way, that participated. And students, they won't be getting their gifts today. They will be wrapped and sent home for the holidays. The reason for us to create the not-for-profit is I wanted my team um, to know how important it is to give back and support the folks that we serve. And those are primarily our principals and our students. And it's amazing. The, the, the kids, they love it. We love to be able to support the, um, the schools. Doing good for those kids. And next year, that security team, they plan to deliver gifts to 20 to 25 schools. Well, we've got an inspirational story here to share with you tonight. A TV celebrity chef is giving back to the Pinellas County area that he says taught him lifelong values. ABC Action News reporter Wendy Lane shows us what he's doing to inspire students with disabilities. Was on Hell's Kitchen and Food Network. Robert Hess is a celebrity chef. Now he and his partner own Fochisi Restaurant and Food Truck that makes gourmet grilled cheese. But before all of that, as a child, he faced a lot of challenges. I grew up in the system of Pinellas County, in and out of uh, youth ranches, boys' homes, from sexual abuse to physical abuse to just being uh, incarcerated. And during that time, he was a student at Richard L. Sanders School in Pinellas Park, a K-12 through school for students with disabilities and troubled youth. From all the success and the lows and the highs, Richard L. Sanders has always been a part of my DNA of saying like it was the direct holding yourself accountable for your, your actions and who you are as a person. Which is why he's focused on giving back. Along with other community partners, Hess brought lunch and gifts to each student. They're getting gift cards and presents to take home. As well as $30,000 in items for their school store, where students can buy things with points for good behavior. Oh my God, I got the Although the gifts were cool and the food was great, the biggest gift for students was hearing from someone real. He knows what he's talking about. He's worked through it himself. 13-year-old Evan Burns was inspired by seeing someone who had walked in their shoes. When I grow up, I want to be an actor. So it was kind of interesting. It tells me even though I'm in this school, I still have a chance. And 19-year-old Aaron Clay says Hess showed him that no matter the situation, there is hope. What it comes to me is that trouble don't really last forever, you know? So, 
don't look at the bad in, in a situation, look at the good at it, you know? Hopefully I can inspire somebody to get up and do something and make a difference. And it's not, it's to me, it's like, just do one act of kindness a day. If you do that, the world would be a better place. In Pinellas Park, Wendy Lane, ABC Action News. All right, to the big board we go here and the Polar Express hitting much of the country here tonight. This massive cold front is causing holiday travel chaos across the U.S. These are live pictures. This is Kansas City here on the left. That is Chicago. Real-time pictures there. By the way, in Kansas City right now, I just looked. It's negative 6 degrees, Dennis, and in Chicago, I think it's around 11 degrees. And, of course, Chicago is further north than Kansas City. But when you have a storm like this, it's the, it's the part of the storm that's hitting, right? Yeah, and tomorrow Chicago it's going to be two degrees. Yikes. That's the forecast high. And you notice there are some ser serious delays, yeah. as you would expect. I mean, we're seeing all that snow. It's, it's bound to be an issue. It isn't just Chicago. It's Indianapolis, St. Louis, that whole area. Domino. So, yeah, there it is. You can see visibility is low in Chicago, obviously, with blizzard conditions. In fact, a lot of people don't realize it doesn't take that much snow for it to be called a blizzard. Blizzard is really more in terms of wind and visibility than it is in the amount of snow. But regardless, it is why a lot of people from Chicago are coming down here for the holidays, even though we will be cold. In fact, this is probably as cold as we'll be all winter long. I mean, you're not going to forecast two months out, but typically when we drop into the 20s, we only see that once or twice a year, if that. And we will in the areas in purple on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. Again, blue color, freeze watch, purple color, hard freeze watch. The difference, hard freeze means 28 or below for several hours, freeze watch means 28 to 32. I'll say this again, yes, it does not include Pinellas or Coastal Manatee or Sarasota or DeSoto. That does not mean there will not be freezing temperatures in Pinellas. I think there will be. It's just it won't be a widespread freeze. So that's why the Weather Service is not going to issue a freeze watch or a warning, probably for that matter, tomorrow for the entire county because there's plenty of spots on the water that simply won't get down to 32 degrees. They'll be probably mid-30s on Saturday morning and again on Christmas morning. There's some rain going on right now. If you live in Pinellas or Hillsborough and Pasco County, you don't need to tell you that. There's some decent rain, some moderate to heavy rain and a little bit more offshore as well. You see the little pockets of red indicating the heavier rain. Even a couple of thunderstorms out there just offshore. So we'll continue to watch that at this point. Nothing severe. I doubt we see anything severe. But there is a slight chance that we could see at least a feisty storm with some lightning and gusty winds. So we'll watch that over the next few hours. But yeah, it's going to rain through the evening across our central counties and areas to the south as well. Then the front, the one that's going to give us all the change, that arrives first thing tomorrow morning. Temperatures today, 60s and 70s. I mean, we were up near 80 degrees across our southern counties. That is before the clouds and some showers came in. 66 and rain at the airport right now. Southeast winds at 7 miles an hour. That's another thing. The winds are really going to pick up tomorrow as well. There's that boundary that's just kind of lingering across the area, bringing some moisture in from the Gulf. But the front that we've been talking about now for, what, a week to 10 days, it's right on cue. And by tomorrow morning, there it is. There'll be a few showers. I don't expect any severe weather out of this front. And that's a bit unusual because typically when we see a powerful cold front, one that's going to give us this kind of cold air, a lot of times there's severe weather with it. This go around, the ingredients are different. There won't be, but it will still bring us all those changes in gusty winds and much colder air on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning, where we will expect a freeze over the majority of the area. Temperatures tonight through tomorrow morning in the upper 60s. Temperatures fall all day tomorrow. They continue to fall all night and drop into the 20s and 30s. There's your wake-up temperatures on Christmas Eve. Afternoon highs mid to upper 40s and wind chills colder than that. Christmas morning, wake up temperatures upper 20s to low 30s. So we will have at least two mornings of a freeze and maybe even three on Monday morning before we see a real dramatic warm up by the time we roll into the middle and latter half of next week. So there's Florida's most accurate seven day forecast. Again, a few showers tomorrow. That 69 will be in the overnight through the early morning hours, the temperatures will fall right on through the day. Saturday, sunny, cold, windy, highs in the 40s, wind chills in the 30s and 20s. Christmas Day, the winds subside.
But the cold air is not going anywhere, at least not until the middle of next week when we're back in the mid to upper 70s. It looks like a northeast forecast, Dennis. Thank you. And coming up next on ABC Action News at 6 tonight, decades after we helped a woman in her time of need, she's now paying it forward, playing Santa to help a local family. And we were there seeing their reaction as she spreads joy. We'll show you more of that in just a bit. Distinctive in design. Meticulous in craftsmanship. Confident in execution. Genesis, a new beginning of what luxury can be. Now lease a 2023 Genesis GV80 for $6.99 per month, only at your Suncoast Genesis retailers. So when somebody has been injured in an accident, the insurance company is already investigating the matter. My name is Doug Bernetti, and I'm the founder of Bernetti PA. The most important thing that you should look for in the lawyer that you're hiring is to make sure that they have the experience and that they have the financial ability to pursue the case. People with lawyers get at least three times more compensation than those without lawyers. I like representing the underdog. At Chevy, the holidays mean going places and doing things you love to do with friends and family. Visit your local Chevy dealer, and when you find your red tag, you find your deal. Then make the most of your time with the people who matter most. Find new moments, find new roads. Well-qualified buyers get 1.9% financing on all 2022 Silverado 1500 crew cab pickups, or find your red tag and get $2,500 total cash allowance on this Silverado with a 2.7 liter engine. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. I have something for you. Hi. <laughs> I have something for you, too. It's the holidays. Get 2.9% APR and no monthly payments for 90 days on turbo high-output engine Sierra Light Duty models. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get 2,500 purchase allowance. Welcome back. Well, this one's a holiday miracle in the animal kingdom. Researchers at Chicago's Shad Aquarium say a zebra shark had virgin births. This is the only, uh, the second known case of asexual reproduction by a female shark. The shark named Bubbles fertilized an egg on her own. Now, it's actually common in invertebrates like starfish, but it's rare among vertebrates. A uh, co-author of the study said that the new sharks, or they, they, they knew sharks, could reproduce on their own, but much is still unknown, including why this happens or what actually triggers it. Still to come, with so much going on during the holidays, it's important to be aware of your heart health this time of year. So tonight, we're going to be speaking with a doctor to offer some tips to stay healthy and safe over the next few days and as climate change and natural disasters continues to impact florida we've got a full circle report out tonight 